The presidency and the cooperative governance minister had until 5 p.m. today to provide reasons for closing beaches along the Garda route or face legal action. The threats were made by the Democratic Alliance and several other stakeholders, including the Garda route district municipality. On Monday, President Cyril Ramaphosa announced that the region was one of three COVID-19 hotspots. Government's stance on beaches along the Garden Route in the Western Cape has drawn sharp criticism from some groups. The Groot Prak Business Forum, Guest House Owners and Afri Forum are among others who are also opting for legal action. In a letter to the President, the Democratic Alliance says the move is unconstitutional and violates the freedom of movement. Under new restrictions, all beaches in the region will be closed from today until the 3rd of January. Now, Garden Route Mayor Memory uh, Boyson speaks to us now. Very good evening to you and thank you so much for speaking to us. As I mentioned that deadline for legal action, what has happened since that passed? Uh, good evening, uh, Tepiso, and good evening uh, to the viewers. Uh, Tepiso, I am not privy at this stage in terms of the response uh, uh, from the presidency to the letter written by John Stienhazen, and uh, I am sure they are dealing with that behind the scenes. But as soon as I'm privy to that uh, and know the content of the response, then that would then uh, indicate what would our next reaction be based on the response from the presidency? Mm -hmm. But what is your view of the attempts to interdict this via the courts? Uh, Tepi, so I've never been uh, so down in terms of uh, spirit uh, because uh, that announcement have actually destroyed the garden route. Uh, and uh, the effect that there is not a single soul on the beach is not rocket science in terms of what that has done to businesses uh, along the beach and uh, businesses within the tourism sector and how that would impact uh, future job losses. And uh, even if, if one walk in town, you can see on people's faces that they are looking for answers in terms of how can this be rectified. Mm. And uh, we're taking it from that point that uh, we cannot fold our arms and uh, allow collateral damage. Uh, so you obviously are part of those who have or are petitioning to have these regulations scrapped, but would you then agree that government has adequate reason for concern because of the super spreader events that we've seen? We've seen how people have completely ignored regulations, even when the situation is being policed, they'd rather take advantage, not wear masks, they don't sanitize, they don't social distance. So what would be the midway? Uh, firstly, we as the garden route, we are ready and we've always been ready to accommodate holiday makers. And we've always and also been ready to deal with the COVID-19 cases in terms of our facilities, in terms of adequate space to deal with eventualities. We've always been ready uh, to, to, to handle these kind of, of, of incidences. But uh, we truly believe that the decision in fact is irrational uh, in, in the sense that uh, it is not based on, on, on uh, health science. And uh, we've, subsequent to the letter written uh, by John Stienes and to the presidency, we've also written our own letter as the Garden Road District Municipality on behalf of all the other municipalities. And we pleaded with the president and we've indicated to him the devastation that that has caused and how we can mitigate this and uh, also the fact that we are ready to deal with uh, enforcement in terms of uh, the basics of the regulations. Mm. So you are saying that uh, people on the garden route are already complying with non-pharmaceutical regulations to mitigate COVID-19. So uh, is there a scientific way of proving this? Because you're questioning the science of this decision. As in, do you have figures of how many people converged at a time at these beaches, um, how they interact? Give us a little bit more information. Uh, Tepiso, uh, 
currently run in front of me. I won't have the figures, but I'm, I'm basing my comment uh, on the fact that uh, scientists are saying that one needs social distancing uh, to deal with, uh, to curb the spread of this virus. And uh, from where we're standing is that open spaces is indeed the spaces where uh, ten, tens of people should get instead of being confined uh, in-house, in uh, shopping malls. The beach would be a better uh, place uh, to, to, to police social distancing. And we also believe, based on what the, 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 the WHO oh, hmm. is saying, that uh, um, vitamin D uh, deals better with, with virus-related illnesses. And what better than, than having people in, in open spaces? Hmm. Because this has now unintentionally pushed people to converge in crowded spaces. And as much as I hear that, Mr. Boyson, there is the issue of there's not enough understood about uh, the air particle infectious nature of uh, the virus and also the issue of social distancing. And I hear that that there'll be better air circulation outside. But the truth of the matter is people don't social distance in all cases. And uh, there is no proof that um, the virus is not tr transferred by people touching or being in close proximity with each other. So let's go to the crux of the matter now, which is, you say, the business that's been lost, about 40% of it. Have you been able to quantify it monetarily? Uh, the, the latest uh, Tepiso, but before I come uh, to the figures, uh, I, I just want to go back to the inconsistency of the decisions that has been made. Uh, why would KwaZulu Natal, just as an example, be mm. treated differently than, than the Garden Route? Uh, if, 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 if that is the, the point of departure in terms of how the president made his decisions, then, then uh, this should then have applied to KwaZulu Natal as well. Mm. And just to come, just to come back to, 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 to the figures. Uh, we have seen uh, submissions from uh, agencies that have already given us a figure that within, within uh, two to three hours after the announcement was made, they had cancellations uh, close to, to the tune of 3.8 million rand. And that was uh, figures which we saw this morning. And we're also aware that people are continuing to, to, to cancel bookings, and those who are already here are continuing to check out. So the figures are de definitely climbing. We're already sitting in the, in, in the millions in terms of just actual revenue that has, that has been lost in the last two days. Mm. Would this also be part of your mot motivation to have more so-called restive regulations that there are far fewer people now in the garden route that at least there should be some agreement on the opening of beaches whether times or the number of people would this be something that you'd be able to say we actually have less people so all the more reason to open up the beaches now indeed indeed Tepi. so if 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 again and i'm going to continue making or uh making the example of KwaZulu Natal. KwaZulu Natal is known for overcrowding at beaches. And uh, uh, relatively to our beaches, their, their stretch of beaches uh, are smaller than our beaches. And, and KwaZulu Natal has been uh, given uh, an opportunity for, 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 for holidaymakers to go there. So uh, in our instances, as you rightfully were saying, that we get less numbers than KwaZulu Natal, which then gives us better opportunity uh, in terms of crowd management. So, so our plea is, is definitely based on that, that uh, we are geared to deal with crowd management and every other thing that, that has got to do with uh, the, the COVID-19 regulations. Thank you so much for speaking to us. Memory Boyson, Mayor of the Garden Route District Municipality, reporting back to us that uh, since that deadline of a five o'clock for government to, to retract the imposition of closure of beaches uh, on the area, there has not been any word yet from government on whether or not they've uh, 
you know, re re retracted uh, the regulations or whether or not they intend to go up against that court challenge. So we'll try and find out.